All right, boys. So Madden dropped Mutt Champs, which they finally updated, basically. And they gave us the NFL draft version of this, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, it forces you to play differently than you normally would, but it doesn't mean that things can't translate over, right? So obviously, if I'm picking an offensive playbook that I really want to run, I'm stuck with a defensive playbook that I may or may not have anything that I like out of. Now, for me, somebody who runs a lot of different off-meta things, like quarter normal, for instance, like I almost always have something that I can run, but there are times, like with the Philadelphia Eagles playbook, if you want the best gun bunch, that you don't have the ability to run a nickel 3-3, a quarter normal, a dollar, a dime. You're basically forced to reinvent the wheel with some formations that you may or may not have used before. And for me, that's exactly what happened. I was forced to use um, essentially Dime Rush because I looked at other formations in this book and I was like, eh, you know, nothing really stuck out. Nickel Over was probably the most meta thing that you could run, um, but I don't really like Nickel Over. For whatever reason, it's not my cup of tea. Um, it does have things that are good, right? Like you can run cover four quarters, cover four palms, but uh, your A gaps are meh. They take too long, in my opinion, to come in. No real edge heat to kind of go around with it. And it's not a symmetrical formation. So a lot of people will just flip away from your nickel corner. And then if they do that, then your blitz doesn't come in. If you flip with them, there's just a lot of things I don't like about nickel over. Um, but with that being said, Dime Rush is the formation I, I stumbled upon. And I really like this formation to the point where I think that this could be my, my new main defense that I use even in Mutt. Right. And the reason for that is I get a lot of those same coverage shells. I get cover four palms. I get cover four quarters. I get cover six. I get cover three cloud. I get your normal Tampa twos and your all out blitzes. You even have the ability to do like cover two man and uh, double safety blitz. There's a lot to work with in terms of your back end coverage on this particular formation. Now, the challenging part here was I had to come up with a blitz, right? I mean, all the coverage shells in the world don't matter if you can't get pressure home. Um, so stumbled across a blitz concept that works right, works really well out of this. And uh, let me go ahead and share that with you guys here. Now, to run this, you do want to run this formation flipped. It looks symmetrical on the screen, so that can be a bit tough for those of you that aren't used to it. The way that I went about this early on is I would just come out in Dime Blitz 2, I would just flip my play. You'd notice that the slot corner blitzing is on the left-hand side of the screen. And then, you know, if I wanted to go ahead and pick, say, Cover 3 Cloud, for instance, I knew that I could do that. Or if I wanted to go Cover 4 Palms, I could do that there. Um, so let me go ahead and just show you the blitz, and then we'll talk about the different adjustments and stuff that you can make. So we're going to show this out of Dime Blitz 2, and then we'll show it out of other formation or other coverage shells. The blitz setup is to shift your defensive line to the left, blitz the middle linebacker. That's all you got to do. Now, from there, you really want to go ahead and mug the right A-gap. Now, you can do that with a safety. You can do it with a slot corner. Um, you can leave it as is if you are less concerned about the pressure coming in, right? So if you wanted to send 6v5, you can do that. You can know the pressure is still going to get home without the mug. Um, but if you want to send less people, it, it becomes a little bit tougher, right? So, like, you could obviously send 5v5 and get the pressure home. I mean, as you see right there, that's 5v5. The A-gap still comes in. Um, but if they were to go ahead and start blocking running backs and slide protecting and stuff like that, you really don't want to um, not mug that right A-gap, if that makes sense. So for those of you guys that aren't familiar with this, when I say mug the right A-gap, the easiest way to do this is to take just one of the slot corners, just come stand right in this, right in front of this guard, basically. Um, and you'll see the two little dashes above my user's head. Uh, basically, what that means is that the O-line is going to recognize me, which means, in the grand scheme of things, that the center is going to double, or the center is going to block the guy directly in front of him, which is what allows the linebacker to come in free, right? So if we were to mug this, right, you could then zone out that left slot DB, and you can see pressure comes in. Once again, that was 5v5. That's nothing crazy. Um, but like I said, with this same concept, you can go ahead and say you wanted to run a double Mabel where you've got, you know, 
30 yard flats and uh, five yard purples. Like you could do something like that and know that the pressure is still coming in, sending four people. Um, if you don't want to use her one of the slot DBs, right? So a lot of people won't want to use her slot DB. You can go ahead, do something that looks like this right here, right? Basically turn this into like a cover three side where you're just mainly in this scenario, you would be playing the middle of the field, right? You could do something that looks like this and get the pressure to come in free. You have so much flexibility with who you can use her and still mug that gap. Um, it's not really going to matter. So against the formation like Bunch Strong, do the same thing. Grab these other slot DB, right? This guy doesn't have to be blitzing or anything like that to make this work. So what about doing something like this? You could still double Mabel this way. Um, now I will say if you mo if you take that defensive end and drop him into coverage, it does become a lot less consistent. Um, it can still come in, but it's not 100%. So it would look more like this, where you're still sending the four people, getting the A-gap pressure that way. That's going to be your surefire way to get the pressure home, if, if that makes sense. With all that being said, the... My favorite way to use this defense would be to come out and cover four palms flipped and then use one of the safeties. So if I wanted to go this route, right? So you could do the same thing, press. In this case, I'd use her this backside safety, just come stand in this right A gap. Um, and then you could contain, right? If you wanted to force your opponent to stay in the pocket, right? A lot of people like to double team and roll out. Well, you can't roll out on against this, not consistently at least. And you notice just how this player has uh, the outside leverage on the tackle. The, the, you're not rolling out to the left because um, of how far out he is. So with this contain element, you know, even if you were to try to double team the end over here, right, and try to roll out, you're just not really able to like. Um, you just, you have a lot of different things that you can do with this and, and be really successful. All right. So the last thing we're going to take a look at here out of this dime rush formation is something that I've started to do, but have not quite perfected. And that's going to be how to get either defensive end or defensive tackle a gap slash B gap. Um, so the setup to this one is going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do is we're simply going to show blitz that brings the safeties down a little bit. You've also got the corners that come down as well. Um, after that, we're going to QB contain and then blitz the slot DB on the left, right? So your play art's going to look like this. And what you'll see happen here is you're generally going to get that B gap that comes in directly from that defensive end. And this is just a unique thing because a lot of people are not used to seeing it. Plus it's a contain. So if they were to go ahead, you know, just drop back a little bit, boom, there comes the A gap directly up the middle of the field by the defensive tackle. It's just different, right? A lot of people have not seen pressure like this. All right, so here we go. One last time for you. Once again, this is a 5v5, but as you can see, you're going to get defensive tackle A gap, and it's just really not something that you expect to see, right? You could take this middle linebacker stand over here, not really going to change anything. There you saw that I did get nano detected. That is something that can happen, although normally doesn't. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead, set up one more time, right? Now this time I'm going to blitz my defensive end, or I'm going to blitz my user, stand in this right gap. That time this guy slid over, picked it up. So, you know, still working through the kinks of this one, but when I do finally, you know, maximize that, you guys will be the first to know. Once again, like I said, this is not something that uh, we have perfected yet or that I have perfected yet, but it is something that will work um, and really will just cause like random pressure that your opponent's not really expecting. Um, that's mainly why we like it, right? So uh, yeah, like I said, simple, really can, can throw your opponent for a loop. And with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video.